time since our last uh, lesson together? Well, I've been reading one or two more books and That's watching great. more TV shows and sitcom, you know. That's I excellent. repeat all of the Friends. Mm -hmm. You know Friends? Yes, it's a series <laughs> which yeah, uh, was uh, very popular at the time uh, in the US. Uh, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. I've heard a lot about it. I've never seen it, but I've heard a lot about it. People talk about it a lot. Is it good? Do you like it? Yeah, it is yes. good, funny, and mm -hmm. I think I can learn a lot for my English. That's good. You know? yeah. That's excellent. <laughs> That's wonderful. You hear the pronunciation and mm -hmm. and also the idiom. So many idioms yes, in the series. Uh huh. That's really good. Wow, I'm really pleased to hear that. Then, uh, Gary. So I see uh, today you've uh, chosen uh, RLS and RPS, uh, real life yeah. situations and role playing simulations. Had we already done this kind of lesson uh, before, Gary? We haven't done it yet before. Ah, this is a new lesson, oh, yeah. right. Okay, I'm quite so, curious. yes, uh, so here uh, what we do is we choose um, a real life uh, situation, so RLS, and then we do a uh, role playing simulation of it. Uh, RPS, you see. So, for example, okay. if you're going for a job interview in the near future, we can practice uh, job interviews with me playing the role of the interviewer and you playing the role of the candidate, the job uh, applicant. Or if you uh, want to uh, practice ordering food and drinks in a restaurant, I can play the role of a waiter and take your order for you. If you want to practice buying a, a train ticket in a railway station, I can play the role of the person who works um, in the ticket office and who sells the train tickets. That's just a few examples of different scenarios that uh, uh, we can do. Uh, of course, you can suggest your own uh, scenarios. Uh, do you have any ideas of what would be an interesting real-life situation which you would like to do as a role-playing simulation, uh, Gary? Oh, well, actually, I don't have any idea. Maybe you have <laughs> any situation that we, we can role-play on? Well, there's also uh, the travel agency where you want to book uh, the holiday of a lifetime, a dream holiday, and I'm the travel agent. Or you bought something in a shop and you're, you're not happy with it because it's not working well. So you want to return it to customer services and I can be the customer services representative uh, and try and find a satisfactory solution for you. Uh, you could be lost um, in an English-speaking uh, country and you want to find the way to the nearest McDonald's because you're hungry oh, and yeah. uh, you ask the directions um, to a local and I can play the role of the local, the local inhabitant. And uh, I can tell you if it's uh, straight ahead, if it's the second or third on the left and then first right, if it's round the corner, uh, etc. the traffic lights, the roundabout, all the different landmarks which are going to help you find uh, the, the nearest McDonald's, for example. So you're used to directions. I could be your boss at work. I could uh, invite you to a work report uh, uh, meeting, the we weekly work, work report meeting, where I ask you how your work has uh, progressed over the last week and uh, uh, any obstacles you might have encountered, any difficulties you might have had, and any questions you'd like to ask. Or you could be the one uh, who is in charge of the meeting as the uh, project manager, uh, team leader, and I could be one of the members of the team. And you're presenting a new project to the team. And then at the end of your presentation, I could then ask you a few questions when it's the questions and answers time at the end. Uh, 
about this new project of yours. So you see there's lots of possibilities, uh, Gary. Do you have any okay. preferences out of the ones I've suggested so far? Or would you like me to suggest some more? I mean, I have lots of different scenarios. <laughs> oh, well, maybe you can choose for me. <laughs> You like no, me sorry. to choose for you. Yeah. Oh, it's difficult to choose. You don't have a particular <laughs> preference. Yeah. Okay. Now, I don't know if you've already done the job interview one, because obviously, you know, that's probably the one that would be the most useful for you for your professional life when you're starting off. You know, if you want to uh, do well in a job interview and by grace, of course, obtain the job that you are applying for. I don't know if you've already done that uh, in one of our lessons before, a job interview simulation. Um, Have we, not yet. Not we yet. haven't done that. Well, we haven't done it. I think that's, if we, we, we have not done it, no. We have, we not. have not, right. We have not, okay. I think it's good because uh, uh, as you're quite young, and therefore, throughout your whole professional life, you'll probably have lots and lots of different job interviews. And it's good to be able to present yourself well. And it's also one of the easiest. That's why I always start off with that one, because it, you are probably the person who can speak about yourself the best, because okay. you know about yourself better than most people do. <laughs> oh, okay. Apart from God, because he knows us better than we know ourselves. But apart from God, you probably know yourself better than anyone else. So you can present yourself um, the, the easiest. And therefore, that'll be the easiest scenario. Because in a job interview, basically, what you're doing is presenting yourself and on, answering a few questions. You, you see what I mean, uh, Gary? Okay, I see. Right. Okay, let's try it. Let's try that then. You ready for the okay. uh, simulation? Yes? Okay, that's great. Ah, oh, hello, Mr. Gary. Oh, thank you for coming for this uh, job interview. And thank you for uh, giving up some of your precious time uh, for this. We really appreciate that. Now, we invited you here because... Um, we found the, the CV that you sent us really very interesting with a lot of strong points in your CV. And that's why we would like to know more about you and to see if you truly are the ideal candidate for this job position that we have in our company. So, please, sir, if you could uh, tell us uh, more about yourself, your educational background, your job experience and anything else that can be um, related to and connected with this job position that you're applying for, please, Mr. Gary. So, first of all, thank you for inviting me, Mr. Walter. You're welcome. Uh, it's my pleasure, you know, to meet you and hopefully to working with you. Mm -hmm. And for yes. my educational background, Mm -hmm. uh, I've been graduated from international relations uh, from university. You, one moment, Gary. You don't say I have been graduated. You would normally say I graduated. have oh. graduated. That's the usual way of saying it. I have oh, okay. graduated. And also it's shorter. Uh, not only is it more correct, but we always try to keep it as short as possible. Did I explain oh, that okay. to you? The yes, importance yeah. of keeping it short and simple, K-I-S-S. Keep it simple and short. Yeah. Keep it short and simple, that's right, K-I-S-S. -S. You remember that. I'll just write that for you so you may remember. That's great, wonderful. Please continue then, Mr. Gary. So, yeah, I have graduated from international relation major in University of Indonesia. Um, in, uh, not well, in university, in the university. In the okay. university. In the university always with the um article in this case the definite article in front of the noun that's right oh. mm -hmm. uh so well luckily uh i graduated with a uh, cum laude um, oh cum laude oh wonderful congratulations <laughs> i must applaud you that's wonderful <laughs> oh i'm impressed very good student, so, top of the class. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, and um, yeah, I'm majoring especially in economy, international economy, and wow. I would yeah. like to have a contribution to your company uh, to, you know, to. Uh, to well, make a instead of having a contribution, no, mm -hmm. um, I think it's better and shorter to just say, I would like to contribute mm -hmm. to your company. You see, instead uh -huh. of I would like to be a contribution to, <laughs> I would mm -hmm. like to contribute to your company. You see, that's even shorter. Um, it's less of a mouthful and it's simpler. Mm -hmm. And I think um, it sounds better. That's how the native level English speakers uh, would say that. I would like to contribute to your company. That's nice. Okay. Okay. I would like to contribute to mm -hmm. your company. Yes. And see if my so I didn't hear very well what you uh, said earlier, uh, Gary. I'm sorry. I've just closed a few um, tabs uh, that were open, a few you know windows, so that um, there's more data capacity and memory available for. Uh, the Skype to run better. So I think it's okay. better now. Uh, I can see the video moving yes. better. So I think mm -hmm. it's more fluent, fluid rather. Uh, if you could just repeat the last thing that you said, please, uh, Mr. Gary. Oh, okay. Yes, thank you. So I would like to contribute to your company and right. see if my expertise would benefit your company in the future. Mr. Mm. Yes, excellent. Well, that sounds really very good indeed, uh, Mr. Gary. Now, uh, we'd like to know a little about a little bit more about you, uh, not just um, your professional side, but also the sort of things you like doing when you're not working, during your free time, leisure time, spare time. What hobbies, interests, pastimes you have, please, uh, Mr. Gary? So I like to do sports and oh. I like to watch movie. Uh, rugby. I usually... You said you like to to watch rugby. No, watch movie. Oh, movies. Sorry. Yeah, movies. <laughs> because you were talking about sports, so I had sports in my head. So okay, movies. Right. Okay. Yes. Uh, I like to play uh, football, and volleyball, and mm -hmm. also badminton. You know, badminton is very well known oh, very in our country. In it's course, very popular in Indonesia. Absolutely. <laughs> I think just after football, I think badminton is number two. Is that right? Yeah, right, right. Right. Oh, absolutely. Right. I well, went to see fact, a film, actually, um, at the cinema. Um, I think it was last year with a very famous badminton uh, ah, star. Yes. It's, it's, a it, it's a woman. And uh, it showed her life story of how she became world famous. And uh, it was very, very powerful. I don't know. Have you seen that movie? Have you seen that film? Uh, I haven't seen the movie yet, but yes. I know the story. Oh, of you know the story. Cisanti, yeah. That's right, yeah. Cisanti. Yes, that's yeah. her name. I'd forgotten her name. That's <laughs> in, oh, excellent. You've seen the same film. That's good. Right. right. Because, you know, in fact, Indonesia got the first uh, Olympic medal. That's the first. Okay. Remember, we tried to avoid the word okay. God. Did I explain that to you about um, the importance of, of avoiding the words get, got, and gotten? Did uh, I explain no. that last time? I didn't. Okay. okay, let me just explain this to you. Okay. Now, this is poor English, low-level English, because uh, got is like a substitute an alternative for just about every other verb in the English language. And uh, it's like bland. It's neutral. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean very much, you see. Just mm -hmm. like the Americans, they have junk food, which doesn't have much content. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what I'd call a junk word because it doesn't have much meaning. Uh, just to give you an example, okay, a little story for you. 
this morning I got up, I got out of bed, I got undressed, got into the shower, got washed, uh, got dressed um, in my work clothes, got downstairs, got some breakfast, um, got out of the house, got my car, got to work, uh, got to my work position, uh, got some coffee, got back to work, got some lunch, got back to work. And at the end of the day, I got out of the office I got my car, I got home, I got some supper, I got upstairs, I got undressed, I got washed, I got into my pajamas, I got to bed, and finally, I got to sleep. So, obviously, that is exaggerating it um, to an extreme uh, level just for the sake of uh, demonstration and illustration, mm. just to show you how weak that word is. Mm. Now, let's just take one example. I got some coffee. Now, that, that doesn't tell us how you obtain the coffee. I mean, we don't know if you uh, went to work with a vacuum flask, a thermos, and you poured yourself a cup of coffee. Mm. We don't know if you went to the uh, kitchen area of the office and took some instant coffee powder and mixed yourself a cup of coffee. Mm. We don't know if you went uh, to the coffee table at work where uh, there are already cups of coffee waiting for you to pick up and you picked up a cup of coffee. We don't know if you went to the coffee machine and um, you uh, paid uh, for a coffee in the coffee from the coffee machine in a um, paid for coffee from the coffee machine mm. and obtained it that way or maybe you went out of the office down the street to starbucks and mm. bought yourself a cup mm. of coffee so you see it's much more meaningful if you said that you poured yourself mixed yourself mm. um picked up uh paid for or bought a cup of coffee. It's much mm. more meaningful than got. This is just an example. Just mm. one instance, you see. Mm. So we need to have a meaningful, ver meaningful verb to replace the words get, got, and gotten. And this was mm. actually an exam I did in England, which was called the Use of English exam, where we had mm. a little story, like I told you, Okay, this is an exam I did when I was 17. It was between O levels, which is when you're 16, and A levels when you're 18, and AO level. And uh, beside each of the words get, gotten, gotten in the text, there was a little space, uh, a little dotted line where you had to fill in a more meaningful verb instead of get, gotten, gotten. Mm -hmm. So this is oh, the way that native level English speakers prefer to speak, avoiding these junk words, mm. as I call them, and uh, having something more meaningful. So in the example, in what you said, if you remember what you said there with yeah. the word got, uh, can you replace that word got by something more meaningful, Gary? Mm. See, see, achieve. I uh, know. See, earn. The what, what, first. What, what was the original sentence you said with the word "got"? What did you say originally? Do you remember? Oh, uh, see, got the first uh, Olympic right. medal. Right now, instead of "she got the first Olympic mm -hmm. medal," what verb could you use instead of "got"? She earn maybe earned she obtained she mm. won she mm. received you see there's lots of other <laughs> verbs that you can use excellent very good guy okay then please continue you're doing ever so well mr Gary. okay so yes he won the first olympic medal for mm -hmm. indonesia mm -hmm. uh, it was a touching moment for us oh, for indonesia. very emotional yes i, I was so, crying I was crying when I was wow, watching the okay. film. Yes, yes, I was crying. <laughs> it was very emotional. I was so touched by that film. It's amazing. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's, the story is not about, uh, it's not about the medal, uh, the achievement no. uh, itself. 
uh, yeah. but also about you know the the race you know how the community mm. see uh yes. Chinese descendant, exactly. you know a different Absolutely. race mm. one can That's... really have a nationality sometimes more than you know the uh, what you call it uh uh the inhabitants no uh the uh i, Citi- I forget. Citi- citizens yeah i uh, mean the, the pure blood citizens uh oh, the, yes um it's, the nationals the um yes the original people the ethnic um yeah. um the 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 the, the um, yes the, the inhabitants of the original inhabitants of the country you know yes yeah, natives yeah. natives uh, that's native, yeah, that's the yeah. word i was looking for <laughs> natives <laughs> natives yes of course mm-hmm. yeah and uh, it's the film shows us the uh, uh regardless of your race is mm-hmm. regardless of your you know your mm-hmm. capability and mm-hmm. your your you would, you would or... pronounce that word capability, capability. More, a bit more you know accentuation stress intonation okay. emphasis capability capability that's right capability so there's more impact and power in that word <laughs> okay mm-hmm. yeah is yeah regardless of your races your capability is you right. can make a great impact for your, your country, for Course. Indonesia. Absolutely. So it was a great movie. Oh, wonderful. I loved yeah. it. I really enjoyed it. And all all my family who came to watch it as well with me, I mean, my family-in-law, I mean, my, my wife and her family, <laughs> they all loved it. They all thought, thought it was brilliant, yes. <laughs> uh, have you played badminton before? Yes, I oh, have, actually. Um uh, I'm trying to remember last time I played badminton. I know I've played this before, um, but it was uh, quite a long time ago. But uh, I have enjoyed playing it. And even though I'm not very good at, good at it, it's good fun. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's good. Mm. You know, a, like a cardio sport, you know, y- you mm. move your hand and... Yes. a lot right <laughs> yes absolutely actually it's easier than tennis because you see with tennis the ball goes much more quickly mm. um when it's going through the air but here especially when it's a high shot you see when it comes down because the shuttlecock because it's called a shuttlecock i don't know if you've heard of that word uh shuttlecock that's the name of the object that you hit um comes down much more slowly especially as it has feathers on the sides right. and all around and so that gives you more time to aim and strike it and right. have accuracy and positioning so i find it a much more precise game and a game which gives you more time to aim and so it's more strategic because sometimes with tennis you don't have the time you just have the time to try and hit the ball back <laughs> but right. you have less time to aim <laughs> and to be more precise so i think it's much more of a precision sport um where you have more time and you can be more strategic do, do, do you see what i mean uh, yeah i see I yes see. Mm. Yeah. and well, and you yeah. you played the game before you you, you like yeah, yeah i I play it every week, actually. Every I week? Play, yeah, oh, every week. You're, yeah. Wow, <laughs> you're a professional. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> just, for, just for, you know, for do sports sake, yes. you know. <laughs> because, yeah, it's a very easy sport to do. You it just need a racket, easy. shuttlecock, and Ra- like... Racket. 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 Yes. Rackets. Rackets. Oops, I wrote that a bit too quickly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> rackets. There we go. Uh, yes, that's right. You just need a racket and a shuttlecock. And yeah. that's it, really. It's very simple. You're right. Yeah, and at least two people, you know, to play it. Absolutely. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. If you compare it to football, you need a lot Oh, of you need a whole team. No? Yes, of course. 
and it's very hard, you know, especially in this uh, in this time to yes. play football with so many people. Of course, because with football, how do you play football when you're trying to apply social distancing? If you have to stay <laughs> minimum one meter away from the other person when he has the ball, how are you going to tackle the other person to take right. the ball from him if you have to stay one meter away? It's True. difficult, it's very complicated. <laughs> Sorry, difficult. <laughs> but with b badminton, you're at least two or three meters away from the other person True. because they're in the other half of the badminton court. And so it's perfect as far as social distance, distancing is concerned. Uh, you're not anywhere near your opponent. So it's really good. It's a COVID-friendly game. You yeah. know, you've heard of user-friendly yeah. uh, applications. This is a COVID-friendly game. <laughs> it's it's friendly from a COVID point of view. <laughs> oh, that's really and, good. Yeah, <laughs> and I like to watch movie also. Movies, uh, remember, movies. plural. You need to okay. pronounce that clearly with the S at the end. But you know what is the difference between the word uh, movies and the word films? What's the difference? Oh, well, I don't have any idea. Well, movies is the um, <clears throat> American English version mm. of that word. So I'll just write uh, U.S. so that you know that's the uh, American way of saying that word. And uh, then the British way of saying that is films. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So at least you know the difference. That's great. Wonderful. So that's excellent, Mr. Gary. Now, uh, tell us... Why did you choose uh, our company when applying um, for a job? What um, interests you in our company? And you talked about um, benefiting our company, um, like contributing to our company. So what exactly do you think you'll be able to com contribute to our company? And in what ways do you feel our company could benefit from you as one of our employees, please, Mr. Gary? Okay, so I have heard that your company is do some research, research in uh, Indonesian economy uh, this right. year. Yes. And, oh, so yeah. if it's something that's already done... Um, has done, not do, okay. unless it's still ongoing. Is it still ongoing or it was something that happened in the past? Uh, it's already happened and still going. Ah, if it's still going, then it's okay to say do, but then you would say um, your uh, company is doing, you see? Oh, yeah. Instead of do, instead of your company do, you would say your company is doing, yes? Okay, so your company is doing uh, research in Indonesian economy. Right. And I would like to... You would to... say in the Indonesian economy. Once again, in you the need Indonesian. the article, the definite article here, the word the, in the Indonesian economy. There we are. Mm-hmm. Okay, so since I also have do have done some research in uh, Indonesian economy in my university in, in, in the Indonesian in the university, okay, okay. In, in the Indonesian economy right. in my last uh, university year, right. So I would like to contribute uh, to your team and right. to do research with your team. Mm. That's excellent. We're very pleased uh, to hear that then, uh, Mr. Gary. And uh, can you tell us, let's say, three of your strong points? So, uh, like, so we have um, a reason for choosing you as the candidate uh, or the um, successful applicant for this job rather than choosing the next candidate, what would you say sets you apart from the others? Uh, uh, what um, 
uh, let's say, would make you the best, the best uh, candidate for us to choose, Mr. Gary. Could you just give us three of your strong points in that uh, respect, please? So, yeah, I think I'm a hard-working person. Right. Yeah, I would I'm like working. to work and I can do uh, teamwork. Good, and... teamwork. That's also very good, yes. Right. Mm-hmm. And I also very curious and humble. Curious, curious, curious. Yes, curious. Yes. Curious. yes. Mm-hmm. And I'm willing to learn from uh, the best people in your company. Right. And I would like to learn from them uh, mm-hmm. about how to conduct the research. Yes. And in the future, I would like mm-hmm. to also to be a you know to be a instructor instructor for uh, mm-hmm. my fellow my fellow uh, team right well that's really good that's excellent mr gary very uh, pleased to hear that and uh, oh if you could just maybe give us um uh, one or two of uh, your weaknesses that is to say the areas you're maybe not so good at and um, which uh, still require uh, some improvement. Uh, what would those be, uh, please, Mr. Gary? Okay, uh, well, uh, I don't know if your company uh, need us to work on week, weekend because I can't mm-hmm. do a lot of work on weekend. Okay. Uh, you know, I have a settled family time. Yes, And of also churching time on the weekend. Absolutely. Uh, mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think it would be my weakness if you, uh, you know, mm-hmm. impose, uh, impose a, mm-hmm. a strict uh, schedule on the weekend. Uh, mm-hmm. And... Uh, well, sec- second, I might not have. A, I might not have. A Normally, b- you would say secondly, not second, uh, secondly. but secondly, yes. Secondly, mm-hmm. I might not have a very uh, strong theory base for your research. Right. So, yeah, that's why I would like to learn from mm-hmm. uh, my fellow teammates. In mm-hmm. your company, yes. uh, about how to build a very, very strong uh, theory base for our research. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. That's excellent, Mr. Gary. So, um, well, uh, for this um, particular level of uh, the um, selection process, uh, uh, that's sufficient uh, for this um, uh, job interview, for this meeting. So we'd just like to thank you once again very much uh, for coming for this job interview and for your time. And we will, of course, keep you informed uh, as soon as um, a decision has been made uh, as to which uh, candidates um, have uh, successfully passed um, to the next level of the selection process and the next round of uh, job interviews. So we will let you know if you're on the shortlist. We'll keep you informed by email. But in fact, uh, just to let you know, you have done very well indeed. So um, I'm very favorable. And if it only depended on me, of course, I would select you straight away as um, our uh, future employee for this uh, job position we have in our company. But as it doesn't only depend on me, we have the whole of the human resources Mm -hmm. department and uh, we're a whole team during the selection process. So obviously the other recruiters also have their word to say, but we will keep you informed, uh, Mr. Garin. So once again, thank you very much and uh, all the best for you. Yeah, I I, I pray you may be successful. Thank you for your time. 
Yeah, Thank ever you. so welcome with the greatest of pleasure, Mr. Gary. Thank you very much. And you have a wonderful day. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So uh, tell me, Gary, how did you find this um, RLS and RPS, this job interview simulation? Was it helpful, interesting, useful for you? What do you think of it? Tell me. Yeah, yeah. It was very helpful uh, mm -hmm. because you have to think right away. It's very yes. different from uh, <laughs> any other lessons because, you know, mm -hmm. if in the Bible lessons you learn uh, about the written words in the That's Bible, right. yes. but now you have to think fast. You oh, yes. to <laughs> answer right away. That's and right. Yeah, I would like to do more role playing. Maybe, maybe mm -hmm. we can settle the topic uh, of course. before the lessons. Yes, yeah. you can let so, me know in advance. Uh, Yes, that's a good idea. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I think so. So it's very useful, very helpful. Of so course. thank you to for correcting my, you know, broken English. <laughs> oh, you're ever so welcome, and may your may the broken English be mended, repaired, and fixed so that it'll be in it'll be perfect. perfect. Perfect English, yes. Okay. The, the best, simply the best, and better than all the rest. By grace, of course. <laughs> uh, you ever so yeah. yes. mm -hmm. and I you would say? like to know, yeah, I would like to know if, you know, uh, I've been improved in this past, like, two months or one month I've been uh, oh, you learning have, from. You have definitely been improving, Gary. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed that... Uh, I've been correcting you less than before because you remember before I was correcting uh, almost everything that you said. Do you remember okay. sometimes I was stopping you yeah. every yeah. every few words um, so it was difficult uh, for you to say a complete sentence because I was interrupting all the time to correct you. But here when you did your presentation of course it's much easier when you're talking about yourself. That's why I suggested this as the first scenario for our RLS and RPS lesson, because it is the easiest thing to talk about. It's talking about yourself and presenting yourself, because you already know right. everything about mm -hmm. yourself, so it's easy. But even though it's easy, you still did very well, because um, your English was uh, much more fluent, and there were less mistakes. Uh, the mistakes tended to be um, specific mistakes, like forgetting the article, the definite article in this case, in front of the noun, uh, which I remember also was a difficulty before, so you need to concentrate on that. Also, pronouncing the S clearly at the ends of words. Mm -hmm. So we hear movies. Okay, that's uh, very important uh, as well. And also just trying to keep it very short and simple, like I have graduated instead of I have been graduated. And also I would like to contribute to your company instead of I would like to um, be a contribution or uh, something like that, which is obviously much mm. longer. So always try and keep it as short as possible. And uh, if you do that, if you concentrate on those uh, mistakes uh, to avoid them, I think it'll improve your English very much. And uh, okay. yes, I think that'll do a lot for your English. And um, just concentrate on those things and then... Wow, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be even better and um, with a bit more practice because, of course, practice makes perfect. And especially when you're having to think quickly, you know, in yeah. real time when I'm asking you questions, then that's also giving you good practice. And, of course, it is harder to do uh, mm -hmm. than biblical English and other things like that. But obviously, this is going to prepare you and equip you for real life situations so that you already have the vocabulary, the expressions, the jargon, the terminology uh, to present in those situations, which you'll probably find yourself in sooner or later, sometime in real life. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, you'll be much more relaxed in those situations mm -hmm. because we've already practiced it during the lesson, if you see what I mean. Right. Yeah, I see. Yes. Great. That's great. great. Wonderful. Well, thanks ever so much again, Gary. Thank All the you best so much. for you. Take care. Keep well. May the Lord continue blessing you Thank ever you so very much. much. Walter, see yeah. you next time. Ever so welcome. Thanks a lot. See you next time. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks, Gary. Bye-bye. Yeah.